perhaps you know other Duamax. Perhaps you want them to be Duamax too. This can be arranged. Seklo card not the above fighting for Duamax against other Duamax if price is right. I don't know why I gave him that accent. <laughs>
it is nice in the sense that it lets you see a few more systems ahead. See sensor range two instead of one. Um, so you might you won't accidentally plow into a system that has a dangerous enemy in it with your uh, your Starfleet. So hmm. These are all pretty good. This one's good because it just gives you uh, more tech cards to play with so you can more specialize your research. Um, this one's good just for basic physics research, but we don't care about physics too much. Let's go with this one. We're playing a really high science game, and I think that boosting that and getting it out faster, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense in my head. Um, uh, the more... Uh, cards that pop, the more you can focus what you're researching, and the more likely you are to get good tech that you want. So that's that's why that's such a good tech. Um, so you are scanning some stuff. What what happened here? Why are you? Where are you? Why did you take me to Seoul? He's around Rakaron. Um, hello. Is it because this is open? I think it's because this is open. Um. Okay, so let's see. Archaeologists have found a forgotten temple in the remote highlands of Earth, uh, buried for centuries but recently exposed by an earthquake. Dating techniques suggest pre-industrial relic, hand-hewn from volcanic, volcanic rock. However, the recurring symbol on the walls and radial altar, a moibus looped serpent consuming its own tail, has no obvious precedent in our early history, and the inscriptions use an unknown alphabet. One excitable archaeologist suggests it's a relic left by an unknown precursor race, and a presumably meaningless coincidence. The quake seems to have occurred at the same time as the final message from the black hole in Viscaran's maw. This merits study. Situation. So we got a new little event popping up. I wonder what it means. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. So we'll, we'll let him do his stuff. What, where are you, Rector? Okay, alien barracks, interesting, sure. Q. Uh, you are, okay, you have passed. Just go find something. Um, wait, we have another A special project. drill rampage. Why did the drill rampage, like, go away and then pop back? What, what happened there? I don't know. Okay, so we've met, um, we met a, ooh, our first marauders. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't point out last time, but, um, I knew that these were marauders just because, like, you can tell when you first meet them, like, just from the kind of space stations and stuff, and they're always near, like, a black hole, so, well, not always, always, but, like, 90% of the time. So, looking at this, yeah, we are cut off from the rest of the universe officially. Uh, we can't get around these marauders, well, most likely we can't, um, sometimes, okay, if you look at marauders here. We could get around these guys. If you order your science ship passive and have them go, like, right skirting the very edge, you just queue it up, they are actually out of range of the stations and stuff. And so they can get around that and go to the next system. Um, the problem is not all of those systems, not all the Marauder systems are uh, set up in that way. But. <clears throat> Sorry. Some of them uh, you can't sneakily try to get around it's also a bit cheaty uh, you know i honestly i feel like um that's not how the game is meant to be played uh you're not it's, it's multiplayer absolutely like um try every advantage you can but in single player like the intent is that the marauders are a mid game to late game threat and then in late game you can finally take them on take them over so we're going to treat them like that um let's attempt to connect them uh, let's see, 50-50, is it going to be a cutesy, ridiculous-looking alien, or is it going to be a terrifying, horrible mon monstrosity? Um, Over-under, I'm, I'm saying... Um, I'm going to go with cutesy, silly alien. Uh, okay, he's, he's kind of neutral. Um, so, yeah, yeah. He, um, like, nine times out of ten, they pick what you would call like a scary portrait or they pick like a silly like cute portrait uh it's rare that you get just a neutral looking boring guy but uh, we did this time um whatever i was hoping we get killer space butterflies but no we got these these boring gray <laughs> 
like despicable neutrals. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, uh, more Dwamax. Uh, what you want, foolish Dwamax? What happened? Make your face look like that reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? Yee! Look at you! <laughs> we are Seclo Car. We hunt Dwamax. We come to Seclo Car Turf. Turf? We make Dwamax too. Not good for you, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I cannot pronounce this word. Yay! I think it's supposed to be like a, 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 a war cry from like the Mongols. Uh, like, honestly, like. It's great. The, the uh, one of the creators of Still Ars and developer stream can scream this at the top of his lungs and and get it perfect. I cannot. I I don't. I just don't have the the, the vocal cords to properly give a good hi hey, yeah yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, perhaps you know other Dwamax. Perhaps you want them to be Dwamax too. This can be arranged. Seclo card not above fighting for Dwamax against other Dwamax if Price is right. I don't know why I gave him that accent. Uh, apologies if I offended the entire universe. He just, I don't know. I, they, they, it reminds me of the, um, of the Dothraki, right? And for some reason, Dothraki always had that kind of like... Uh, Generically, like Mediterranean accent, uh, <laughs> like, um, and, and yeah, like, or, or not quite Jamaican, but maybe a little Caribbean mixed into it. Uh, anyway, yeah. So these guys, they are Dothraki, but in space, and so they're big and scary, and we cannot get past their. Occasionally, they'll send a fleet at us, um, just to steal resources. Which is good. It's a good event when you get attacked by Marauders because if you can beat them up enough, uh, you can scan their technology and it's it's like free stuff. Um, so we'll look forward to that. Uh, ooh, wait, wait, wait. So this Derek ship. Um, you are pretty good. I don't want to send a pretty good scientist to do Derek ship. One of those Amber one. Amber is also pretty good. Um, just scan whatever. Look, you're right here. Just scan these. Come on. Uh, that the, the the auto survey thing is useless sometimes. Um, yeah, we're starting. We're almost done scanning the universe. Um, ooh, look who's coming in our, our direction. Um, yeah, we need to fortify here actually. So we we do have. Yeah, uh, we can actually build. We need this. We need this right now. Um, we also need to upgrade our fleet, but um, the anchorages are, are also pretty good deterrent. What is our um, strength looking like now? Ah, uh, yeah, see the necromages are, are boot, they're overwhelming now. Thankfully, they aren't our neighbors, but look, these guys are superior and our neighbors, they are coming for us and they are, they are, they are hungry for, uh, you know, that human, um, Star system. I, I I don't know where I was taking that. Um, where where are you, Bernard Star? Right, you finished doing the scan. Got us a free tech. Destroyers are cheaper uh, now, thanks to that. I I freaking love that event. I hope we get a lot more of it. Um, we are starting to hit our maximum border range. Like, um, I mean, we can still expand and get these plants. Awesome. So we get a free tech. Or, or, or not free tech anymore. It used to be free tech. Now it's like 25% boost. That's still pretty good. I'm still happy with it. Good. Um, let's get that construction ship back to here. Because we need to start thinking about trying to get the Sita and, and this system if we can. Uh, let's actually send you here to accomplish that. Um, let's see. You are scanning the stuff. Guys, I'm going to have some more M&Ms. I know last time disaster to like two minutes to eat them all but we'll leave the game running see what happens mm. Uh. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. hmm 
Hmm. Oh, these guys are unhappy because we have no new contact. Hmm. That'll change in, in... What do you mean no new contact? We just contacted these guys. I guess they don't count for it. I'm outraged. There's no pleasing the Xenophile faction. They are the worst. But they, you know, they're 75% of our population. We're kind of stuck with dealing with that. <laughs> uh, hopefully we get some materialists going, but we need more robot pops to get that to go. Uh, if you are in a democracy, or, or it doesn't even matter, like, if you're trying to change your ethics, there are ways to trigger that. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Because we haven't really talked about this yet. Um, oh, interesting. This Okay, we'll get back to that at home. Uh, is this Subin? Uh oh. Yeah. Construction completed. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's another um. Uh, dude. Um, big scary. Yeah, look at him. He's glorious. He looks like a uh, retro virus, actually. Kind of cool. I, like, I really like the, the Leviathan's designs. Uh, they did a pretty good job on them. You know what? He looks a little bit like a retrovirus from the front. But from the back, he looks like a tick. Yeah, like if we zoom in, he's got like a weird little slurpy mouth part. And the six legs and, and big big old butt. He looks like a tick. Or, or a viral... A, a retrovirus, either or. Anyway, he's a big scary leviathan, very dangerous. Um, we're gonna not go near him. Our scientist was murdered instantly. <laughs> so, it's fine though. We don't need all these scientists anymore. I mean, we, we've scanned everything we can scan, it's, and that's probably it, honestly. Um, we aren't going to. Yeah, until we get the L gate. I, or something happens like the Commonwealth of Man, we're pretty stuck. We are pretty stuck. Now, there is there is this wormhole as well, so maybe that'll open up. But in the meantime, we'll, we'll spread what we can spread. All right, we'll get these star systems and these. We'll get all that locked down, and we'll fortify as best we can. And maybe think about going after the Synthoid Manifold because they are in our way. We can defeat them, then we can get back out into the galaxy and start surveying again. So that's a good motivation to go to war with a potentially very dangerous uh, enemy. <laughs> You're in our way. Move, jerk. Uh, like, like you know, it's a classic thing. Like You're trying to get some water out of the uh, water fountain after a day at the gym. And some big shock jock guy is just like, uh... I'm going to stand in front of the water fountain and you can't get the water. And, and you just, like, you try to get around them, but you're tiny, you got little noodly arms, and just like, yeah, you can't get around me, can you? <laughs> um, I speak from experience. Uh, uh, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say I got bullied much as a kid, but there were a few jackasses, and um, at least before I hit my growth spurt, uh, I, I got targeted a little, but... <laughs> Like, honest to God, the moment I hit my growth spurt, I got gigantic. So, uh, no one picked on me in high school or anything. It was mostly a lower school, like, uh, you, yeah, I hit you with a dodgeball really hard kind of kind of situation. Um, but no, I, um, I, I definitely, like, shop a lot, uh, thanks to puberty. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's get back to doing our research and stuff. So, we got, um, wait, what? Oh, jeez. That scared me. Uh, I felt like a weird thing on my leg. And I was convinced. Convinced it was a bug. Um, but it was not a bug. Uh, what do we do here? Uh, it's still pushing. They're really pushing the food, aren't they? Food or gene clinics? I almost... Oh, I'm wondering if I need gene clinics to unlock more advanced en genetic engineering stuff. I have a feeling that might be the case. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to bite the bullet. Um, this will be a way to re-roll our cards anyway, see if we get something better. Uh, as for these other techs, uh, they're okay late game when you need more food. Um, 
but they're not we're not desperate honestly where I'm gonna start selling food action in a second um this one's really good but I, I'm not really worried about my naval capacity just yet you need this you need this for um, ship starting experience uh, it was always nice and um, the Anchorage boost is good too but the the thing is like I, I like to get this after I have upgraded star bases and we don't have them. so I, I don't I don't feel pressing need for this you definitely want this tech it, it's it's a pretty big boost to your naval capacity honestly um, but I'm, I'm not I'm not so eager for it and and these food techs I, I don't care so much about food let's let's uh, this is a pretty cheap tech 33 months. Let's research it, see what happens when the cards re-roll. Maybe we'll get something good. Uh, we all have to know the tradition. So both of these, not so great, honestly. Um, the research output, 10%, is nice if you have like some crazy system with with a lot of research, but I don't, so it's not as good. Um, and what well, we do have a lot of scientists working research, don't we? Yeah, let's do that. We'll, we'll get that one, then we'll get the other uh, um, that, that big uplinks, and we will be done with Discovery forever, uh, which will be a good boost to our science. It's another 10% boost to science. Um, you, please keep upgrading, because I feel like the Synthoids are getting ahead of us, and I don't like that. I, I, want, them, uh, on the, I want them to be shivering in their boots, thinking about humans attacking them. I don't want it to be the other way around. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, see, we are, we have no more unsurveyed systems, so we are going to, um, I'm just going to order all these dudes to, like, return to Earth. How, how are we doing on burn, burn, goal? Well, we still have two jobs. Uh, we have some decisions to make. Distribute luxuries, exit an art monument. I, I should have done that ages ago. Oh. Oh. Oh, interesting. So, why are we getting all these, like, ally... The, the Boki Chroniclers have declared war on our alloy. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, hopeless war. We're being attacked by a fallen empire, an ancient precursor of civilization that we currently can scarcely hope to defeat. It would be advisable to cut our losses. Oh, no. <laughs> Why did I make defensive pact treaties with all these? Because I won the migration treaties. Um, we got to cut those off. Yuck. Um, so we are in a war of humiliation against a fallen empire. It's probably one in here. Um, why are, would chroniclers... Okay, so a lot, a lot of stuff is happening. Encounter the Husko Cartel... Hello, um, yeah, we are delayed to meet you. They are ruthless capitalists. They are, so honestly, when I invent these guys, when I made this one, I was thinking of Jabba the Hutt. They are a criminal syndicate. You know, he's, he's running like his uh, gambling uh, festivities and, or, or like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're bad dudes, but I mean, their, their main motivation is like profit. It's not so much. They're more greedy than they are, like, wanting to conquer everybody. But they tend to conquer everybody anyway. <laughs> so it didn't quite work out like how I envisioned it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I was thinking Jab of the Hut. That's why I picked this weird caterpillar gross thing. Um, yeah. So we are at war with Keepers of Knowledge. I, what? Oh, uh, what? Mm. I wonder how that happened. I wonder how that happened, because usually keepers of knowledge are very friendly. So it kind of sucks that we're stuck in a war with them. Huh. Why would that happen? Um, where are they anyway? Keepers of knowledge, hello? Way down there. The doorway. Oh, okay. Uh, that's just, it's not. Has been updated. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That, that's not what I was thinking of. The doorway is actually an interesting one. Where, where do we get the? 
Okay. So, I should probably get out of these uh, defensive packs, but mm, the reason I should get out of them is, uh, you know, I don't really want to be dragged into their stupid wars, but, I mean, oh well. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm stuck in their stupid war. Um, I see how it happened now. Oh, of course. Of course. Okay, it's a Scion War. It's a Scion War, and these guys are Scion of the Boki. Oh, okay. Because normally they'd be super friendly with us. Um, usually the Chroniclers are not all that scary. But now we're in a war with the Gox, which is... Ugh, that is not chill. Um, how are we going to handle this? Well, first thing I'm going to do is let's go to the market. Let's add a monthly trade. We're going to sell food. We're going to sell a whole bunch of food. Um, just keep selling it. And um, what else can we sell? See, I'm hoping to buy some alloys so we can actually build our fleet up so that we can maybe do some damage to the gods. Because um, I'd like to at least beat them up enough that I can scan their ships because they probably do have tech that we don't have. Um... And I need just a few more alloys to do that, and the only way I'm going to get that is with the market, because I don't have enough forges. Uh, let's see. God, so expensive. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll just occasionally buy some alloys. Actually, let's add a new monthly trade to buy... We have detected an anomaly. Buy alloys uh, 16 at a time, I believe, is the number you want. Uh, I forget exactly why, but, um, basically it's, the hundred food is equivalent to 16 alloy, so the hundred food I'm selling will pay for the 16 alloy that I'm buying, and I won't be desperate for, um, more alloy. All right, now we're, let's just finish spreading out and colonizing all this stuff. Um, incredible and Algate Insight. I should check... Um, okay. We want to probe this, sure. It won't take too long. We want to investigate the Loop Temple. Um, yeah, we'll research that. Study these. Study these. I'm basically dedicating all my studying to all these little things that we haven't done just yet. Um, I want to see the L Cluster. Five out of seven. Wow. We are very close to actually System opening the L Cluster. Um, from the book, I've been... To the Ampal Deer system. Where's Ampal Deer? Ampal Deer. Because I don't want to send my, my dudes to Ampal Deer. Where? Okay. Search. Ampal Deer. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh. Wah. They're they're coming to punish us, and we we just we have no way to. Uh, so who's our leader? Okay, he's useless. Can I surrender now, please? Uh, I want I want to su surrender now, please. <laughs> oh, I can't even surrender because I'm I got pulled into this war by the stupid defense treaty, but I'm not the one who gets to decide. Ah, oh, crap. So, we are about to get just humiliated, beat up. It's going to be disgusting and awful. Um, and I don't want it to happen, but alas, I it's going to happen. Um, let's move you away. And we're not going to build any more ships. Just get out of the way of the uh, precursors, because they are they coming. Oh, Lord, they're coming. Awesome! I've wanted to talk about these guys for ages. So, remember way back in the day when I was like with the Alari, how they are, um, uh, what you call it, the, I, I said there was something about them that I want to talk about just yet. Um, but now we can talk about because I finally met the Quinty. So, the Quinty have that, uh, the origin where they start on a relic planet. 
I forget exactly what it was called. Um, we are delighted to meet you, Quenty. Let's pause. Uh, let's let's go look at the Quenty. Uh, Quenty. 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 Q. Where are you? Here. Uh, they already hate us, and it's going to be hard to make them like us because we are allied to a rival. Mm. Oh well. Um, not well. Well, eventually we're going to try to get relations higher with with those that we can, but <laughs> it's going to take a little while to get to that point. Um, so yeah, we're allied to a rival apparently. Um, so what is the deal with the Quenty? Well. Uh, if I go to communicate, can I see? Okay. Uh, the whole idea I had behind the Quinty was they used to be, they used to have an empire that was spanning most of the galaxy. They're incredibly powerful. They had conquered system after system. Um, in a bygone age, these, these, uh, were like the dominant species, right? They're doing really well, but, um, they, they grew more and more, uh, so basically like their lifespans, right, are super long. And with each new generation and, and new discoveries with technology, they, they got better and better at living longer and longer. And now they're one of the longest lived species. If we actually go to the species tab and take a look at them, I need to see your actual... No, this is contacts. I said species, please. Close the contacts tab. Open the species tab. Um, oh, what? Ooh, we got we got an immigrant. Check it out. Our first. Um, it must have been either. I, I think it was Burn Burgle. Yeah, look, an Everite. Now you're probably wondering where the hell did the Everites come from? Well, you're about to learn. You're about to learn. Um, okay, and that's because a new planet gets a ton of. Just a ton of people wanting to move here. They, they love this new place. Burnburgle is the place to be. So, going back to contacts. Uh, the Quenty. Go back to communicate. Um, so, these guys, they, they live a very long time. And, oh, I, I never... <laughs> I, I, I try to tell a story. And, of course, I'm jumping around like crazy. Get me out of contacts. Get me into... Not this. Yes. Okay. So, if you look at the Alari... They have venerable. They live plus 80 years. And if you look at the Quenty, if this would actually scroll, Q, 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 Q. Also venerable. So what happened was the Quenty, their species, had colonized most of uh, the galaxy, right? And um, they grew very, they're very talented, long lived, but they also, they turned inward. They started to value Quenty stuff over everything else, even exploration. Uh, they became obsessed with chronicling. If, if we actually go to back to contacts, and <laughs> I'm sure they're like, why do you keep talking to us? Um, they became obsessed with chronicling all of their achievements and, and how great they were. Uh, the, they Essentially, their whole religion turned around them being the best and wonderful and all that. And because it turned so inward, their empire began to crumble until eventually it collapsed completely. And so they are remnants. This civilization once spanned the void, controlling much of the galaxy. They were eventually defeated and almost destroyed. After a long period of destitution, they are returning to the stars. So yeah, they start off on a relic world. They're obsessed with the past. Uh, they can only... All they want to do is remember how great they used to be, right? And And... Um, you know, they're very much like just kind of dedicated to old Alvania and, and all that. Uh, but their new leader, uh, Queen Falatir, uh, she was not destined to be High Queen Falatir, wasn't supposed to be the queen. Uh, she had a bunch of brothers and other siblings, but one by one, they all got killed off by either randomness or, or assassinations and that kind of thing. And so she became into power. And she was actually raised to be like a relic. Uh, searcher, right? She would go out and, and find relics in, in you know, the ruins, because that's part of their religion, their faith, um, is to study the past. So, like, she used to work at a sanctuary where oh, she's basically kind of like a nun. And, um, because of this, she's very interested in 
ancient Quenti relics. And she's realized that although there's still many treasures and wonders to find on their home planet, um, it's not sufficient. There are other Quenti relics out there. And she has gone out there to... She's basically the first ruler in, in thousands of years to suggest that they build a fleet and they move outward in order to find more about their ancient past. Um, and they've forgotten almost all of their space empire. They knew at one point they, they had an empire, but they, they just regressed so far, they couldn't even remember how long they had ruled the galaxy and, and all that. Like, so, you know, they're, they're kind of like, they're starting over from the ruins of the past. Uh, they also have the Philosopher King uh, civic, because that, that kind of reflects this, this new age that High Queen Falatir is ushering in. Um, you know, she is very, uh, very keen to, um, she's a reformer and, and all that good stuff. So she still has to deal with the native xenophobia of her people. Her people don't trust the outside anymore. They, they think well, if we're the greatest civilization, why do we need to leave? You know, why do we need to go out and explore? So she has, there's some conflict between her and the nobles and stuff over that. On top of that, um, Fanatic spiritualist, because, you know, they worship uh, their ancient past. So fun little kind of like role playing thing, right? Now let's go to uh, the other contact, the Alari. Alari. Uh, they're not called Alari. They the Divine Alari Imperium, right? So the Divine Alari Imperium, our our neighbors, our friends, we met long ago. They are actually a lost colony of the Quenti. That's why they have the same portrait and everything. I mean, you can't actually set that up in vanilla um, Stellaris, but I'm doing it lore-wise, right? And so, like, these guys, they don't know it, but they assumed that the Empire had just kind of fallen, you know, and that the uh, they were the last bastion of their people. And so these guys, they... Um, I, I questioned the authoritarian. I think it was supposed to be militaristic, and I changed it and forgot to change it back. But what happened with these guys is, so they ended up on a planet, uh, and they lost all contact with the Quinty, right? The Quinty way over here, they're on the other side of the galaxy. And um, after losing contact, they settled on this lush jungle planet where they met the Everites. And the Everites are intelligent, horse-like lithoids um, that they trained to be sapient mounts and kind of servants so uh, you know I, I wanted to base these guys a little bit off of the dragon riders of urn but instead of actual like the dragons they're they're um they're crystalline unicorn things uh and so that is why we have an ever right in our empire we have a migration tree with them and they they tend to kick the everites out uh, everites are actually pretty good like um they do skin plane crystals they, they got omac happiness they just, they suck as leaders, but they can't be leaders, so that's a free trait, right? Um, plus, Lithoids, they won't eat any of our minerals, they prefer, uh, they won't eat any of our food, they prefer minerals. Yeah, and you see, they're kind of like horse-like things. I think, so, as a joke, one of the developers said he promised that he would put unicorns into the game. And I'm pretty sure this was meant to be a unicorn, right? It's got, like, a little horn on his end, it's kind of rhino-looking face, and he's got a little poof stuff. Yeah, he's a rock monster, but you can kind of see him being, like, maybe a mount of some kind. Maybe not, because that would be painful to ride on, but uh, whatever, whatever. In the lore, I imagine these being, like, quadrupedal unicorn-type crystal things. <laughs> and so, like, that's the whole deal. That's why I held off on telling you about the Alari and the little bit of lore I had for them, because we had to met the Quenty first. So, so yeah, basically, they're um, the these guys... I don't know. I, I need to tweak them. They're supposed to be militaristic, and I I want I guess a little bit authoritarian. You need for syncretic evolution, but um, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll probably tweak them in the next game. But I like to keep. I have like a bunch of races I like to play with, and this is one of them. So yeah, they don't know it, but it, also they've been separated so long that they have diverged as species, um, just slightly. Uh, that's, that's likely to happen. Like if, if we have colonies on other star systems, eventually evolution happens, right? So these guys have evolved to be a bit more traditional, uh, solitary and slow breeders, whereas the Quinty, um, are, they're more talented because they're still haughty, 
right? Think of these guys. The Quenya, right? The High Elves and the uh, Alari, maybe the Dark Elves. <laughs> every, every you're thinking in like terms of uh, you know, fantasy tropes. Um, anyway, that's all deal with them. Let's unpause. And um, M&Ms, we're about to get our butt kicked, so I need to get this guy out of the way. Um, I'm not going to reinforce because what's the point? Uh, these ships are coming at us and they will be here fast. Uh, it doesn't, it seems like they're far away away, but it, they're not. Um, yes, yes, our flesh will burn. Our science ships don't know what they're doing anymore, so let's just send them back to wherever. Where is this ship? Uh, Alioth, uh, yes, please, go ahead and get that. Um, have we gotten a new... Consumer goods. Okay, yeah, we're still waiting on an election. Archaeology site, bowel stuff. Cool, cool. Um, here, here they come. <laughs> yep, yeah, they're coming, and, and they are going to they're going to wreck us. Um, and it's frustrating because I didn't I didn't start this war. The Gorf did, and somehow they, they yeah, and, and now the Gorf are probably going to kill uh, the Mituhar, um, which might be an opportunity for us. I don't know. I don't know what happens. Uh, ooh, ooh, this uh, specimen procurement is is just like a it's a little thing they'll pop for Xenophiles eventually. Um, do we want to donate? Yeah, I still need influence. I still need a little bit more influence. So eventually, I won't need influence anymore. I'll grow as far as I can grow, and I, I won't be interested in it. Um, but we are not at, at that point just yet. Where are you? Um, yeah, keep, I, I do want to try to build out to here so I can do this archaeology stuff. Um, I'm not, ooh, ooh, a, a new contact. This is fun. Uh, hold on. Ah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Well, I have a mouthful of candy. <laughs> I don't normally eat this much candy. It's just, I don't know, holidays I tend to eat more. Mm. Uh, and we just had Valentine's Day. I'm going to, you know, um, time stamp this. So, uh, anyway. Garanchu, um, yeah, these guys are interesting, so, Hegemonic Imperial, Bliss, they're a bandit kingdom, and that is because they have, there's an edict that they have that, not an edict, um, they're, they're, the the spoilers, I have to go here, um, contact. Who do they not like? Oh, good, we have mutual, we should actually get along pretty well with these guys. I'm going to pull this improving relations off of the uh, Mitrons because I think our I think that's set and I want these guys to go up. So um Mitron done. All right. And hopefully they will come to like us. So these guys are fun. You know, I want them to just kind of be kind of wild pirate types. Um they got our Barrett to spoilers. Uh, oh, we can't form migration trees with them. I didn't know that about. Oh, that well, that's an ad challenge. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens here. But yeah, um, they're basically imagine like the Klingons or something. You know, they they're just gonna go out and uh, wreck people and, and take slaves. And really, we shouldn't be friends with them. Uh, ordinarily, we would hate these guys, but. Um, on account of their authoritarian, you know, uh, slaver bent. Um, but we, we happen to be mutual friends with a lot of surprisingly, like, nasty dudes. And, and so I guess we're part of the club now. And uh, Warlord Ganak Mykon um, welcomes us. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I suspect making friends with them is, is going to mean making enemies with someone else. Holy crap! They are doing well. Like, yeah. Um, I see. So they they, they spread out here, and this looks like uh, they conquered some 
back back uh, primitive savages uh, over here. Here we go. No, they just colonize it. Oh, man, I'm impressed. Normally, these guys get wrecked early and, and aren't scary, uh, but these guys are, are doing fine. Like, that's a lot of colonies and, yeah, doing, doing good stuff. Please continue to reinforce the fleet. Now, I might try to sneak this fleet out to here. Because I, I, I want to scan some stuff and I want to help my alloy. A alloy, my ally. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm coming for I'm coming for you. Hang in there, okay? Midohar. Oh, I, I need to avoid that, though. I need to avoid that. That is not what I want to be tangling with. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, another loop one. Um... Uh, do I want to read this? Let's see. It's it's God, that's a lot of words. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, why not? Uh -huh. Let me prepare myself with a nice glass of water. Uh, our scientists have learned a great deal about the subterranean temple, but some questions remain. A roof aperture, along with the radial altar, altar. altar. Uh, suggests it was once a solar calendar, but so badly damaged by the earthquake that we can't be certain. If the builders found any particular dates important, we'll never know which ones. We've had better luck with the unknown alphabet. It's a debased variant of a better known hieratic script. Not an alien language at all, but we successfully deciphered it. The temple is dedicated to the waiting worm, or the worm in waiting. Uh oh. Uh, we've, we've met a worm before. Yeah, that's right. Uh, most of the inscriptions are sonorous, poetic invocations requesting its appearance or, if read in the other direction, its departure. There's also a body of inscriptions describing the operations of the universe, which are more excitable archaeologists swear contain references to advanced field equations. Nothing new to us, but very impressive for a temple of this vintage. We have yet to find a physicist who's prepared to go on record in agreeing that the references are meaningful, though. The temple holds no cosmic secrets or alien weapons, as far as we can tell, but its dark spaces have a distinctive, menacing beauty. And the poetry of the invocations to the worm in waiting becomes fashionable. They are set to popular music. They are published in collections. Um, so you have several different options. You can open the loop temple to the public, Something from our past, what was, will be. And that gives you 5% happiness boost. That's very good. Um, reserved for academic study only. That seems kind of cruel. Our people, they, they love what was, and they want what will be. I, we can't deny them that. Uh, and then there's something wrong here. See the temp Nothing wrong. The, the worm loves us. It's waiting for us. Yes, open the loop temple to the public. Get some extra happiness. A rendezvous. The messenger. What was, will be. The UNS Gagarin has located a small, minimally powered artificial object, broadcasting a looping signal at local range only. These sorts of things usually turn out to be escape pods, and this looks like one of those. It's been out here for a long time. When the crew cracks it open, carefully observing quarantine procedures, they find ancient remains preserved by the sterile pod environment. So far, not unusual. The captain of the UNS Gagarin indicates, however, that they did not expect to find the human words. What was, will be. What will be, was. Daubed on the wall in the bodily fluids of the pod's occupant. Who the crew are now, rightly referring to as the messenger. They add that there are some equally unexpected anatomical similarities between the messenger species and our own. Interesting. Situation log has been updated. A rendezvous. The Eunice Gagarin is being hailed by the Tsuzigi of the United Nations of Earth. This, despite the fact the Tsuzigi isn't sending any ID codes we recognize, and no ship of that name has ever been commissioned. Its commanding officer claims to be Captain Wu Hei. Our admiral of that name is alive, well, and elsewhere. Dun dun dun. <laughs> a rendezvous. The captain that was. The captain that appears on our screen is clearly Wu Hei, but scarred, haunted. 
decrepit, wrecked edition of Wu Hei, face glossy with plasma burns and older, much older. The bridge in the background looks just as scarred and just as decrepit, but the captain's voice is firm and clear. Finally, you're here. I've waited so long. My punishment is to die in battle against you. Please, end me. I'm sorry. What's happening here? Are you really Wu Hei? Am I? Are you the same human you were last year? Every day is a death. Every future is a choice. Time is a labyrinth, not a road. A chuckle. It sounds like the chuckle hurts. <laughs> Ask the loop. If you want to end it, why wait? A warship is full of ways to die. Don't you remember? Of course you won't. Yet. And you might not. Now. Not if you do it right. The loop needs its sacrifices. And it needs them just so. An agonized coughing chuckle. <laughs> you don't want to trifle with the loop. What is the loop? The loop is what came first and what comes next. The worm in waiting. And I suppose the worm is the loop. Let's see. Time is a labyrinth. It gesticulates futilely that the loop is, is its monster or its maker. No, I can't explain it. And you don't. And you'll know more soon. You did in my past. Weapons locked? Surrender. Whatever you've done, we can help. Battle station. Too late, the captain says. Not without regret. And cuts the transmission. Invasive maneuvers. Boom. Okay. So we got we got to do something about this Ziggy. Um, this is probably super dangerous, but I'm going to try to make my way over there. Um... Hopefully I won't get ambushed along the way by some horrific uh, blob uh, uh, like that. <laughs> I, I saw one coming this direction. I don't know what happened to it. Um, hopefully it stays away for now. Oh, God. Look, the Husko. Husko getting... Wait, where is this? Oh, God. Wait. Yeah, they're here. Um, there's no... We, we won't be able to stop them. The best we can possibly do is avoid, like, them, um, wrecking us. Now, my concern is, are they going to steal this from us if we, um, if we declare peace, does that mean we just don't have the Varrakis Black Hole anymore? I don't know. Um... But we will see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've literally never been in a war of humiliation against a fallen empire. I, I just, I never end up pissing them off. So this is kind of new ground for me. It hasn't happened. I swear, baby, this hasn't happened before. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, I, I assume they're going to kick my ever-loving butt. Like, there's, there's just no... No chance of surviving um, an attack by them. So I'm hopeful that I can somehow play dodge, you know, dodge it with my fleet, and and turn out like okay. I'm I'm basically I'm going to lose this war. I just want to minimize the effect of losing this war as much as I can. Uh, uh, mm, sorry about that. So. We'll see what happens. I mean, um, I, I might be totally screwed here. Like, uh, the big worry I have is right now the Gox are advancing a bit in this general direction. If they get to keep this territory when the war is ended, they, they could conceivably stroll straight to the Novogi Black Hole and take it from us. And I really don't want them to. I'm kind of hopeful that maybe they'll be too distracted fighting the Mitrons. Uh, or this war will end sooner rather than later. I would surrender right now if I could. But it's not my war. I don't get to choose. Because I'm in a really stupid defense pact that I never should have made. But uh, them's the breaks, I guess. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, I do need to like, get out of these defensive packs, honestly. Um, thinking about, well, this is a pretty good defensive pact, and I kind of need it, so I'm, I'm not going to leave that one. But the other one, I, I don't need to be in it at all, and it's a little frustrating that I'm stuck in it. Um, okay, well, you guys just work your way back towards Seoul, please. 
who passed, the scientist. I'm not going to immediately replace the scientist because why would I? Yeah, uh, man. Interference. Oh, no. We, we didn't get there in time. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> we are completely surrounded. Um, fleet, just go hide in, in pro sound. Just get way out of the way. Hopefully, they won't try to, like, attack you. Um, if I'm making any ships, stop making them because they will be destroyed, potentially, and we need to save all... We need to save as much as this of this as possible so we can rebuild. Um... Yeah, God, I hope my fleet can just hide out in some random star system and not be attacked. This is bad. They're really coming. So what happened was uh, another one of these Fallen Empire fleets uh, managed to sneak on, around this way. But I, I know exactly how they did. They went through this wormhole. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting wrecked. Um, and sadly, I didn't get to the rendezvous. Uh, if you do make it, uh, your admiral gets a, a, a unique bonus. I don't think it matters too much, though, because this admiral is... Well, he's still kind of young. Damn. It, it would have been kind of nice to get, um, but that, them's the breaks. Uh, so, a sack speckled message comes in from the captain of the Suzuki in Rimborth. Behind them, the bridge is wreathed in smoke. Too late. <laughs> You left it too long. The loop won't forgive me. Please. The message ends there. Mm. So we'll have to send a scientist in there after this crazy, stupid war is done. Uh, I hope it ends sooner rather than later. I am not pleased to see massive fleets bearing down on all of our systems. God, if we just lose these star systems, this is going to totally change how we're playing the game going forward. Um... Could be very bad. Strangely, the dimensional portal in Burm Burgle seems to connect to a planet which is very much like Burm Burgle. Stranger still, there's a signal being broadcast to us through it. Put it on screen. Whoa! <laughs> um, this is Wei Zhuge of the United Nations of Earth. Who are you, portal aliens? No, I am Wei Zhuge. Who are you? <laughs> um, no, who's on second? <laughs> anyway. Um... Uh, let's see, portal alien communication. Fascinating. If what you say is true, I think this portal bridge is a gap between alternate dimensions. We are both the Wei Zhu, but at some point an event must cause our respective dimensions to diverge. Amazing. Tell us how you humans fare. Much the same as it fares in your dimension, I expect. We have spread out through space from Earth since the discovery of the warp drive. The warp drive, we travel by hyperlanes. Hyperlanes, perhaps discovering different types of FTL travel, was the divergence point between our two universes. Does that mean you are not beset by the warp beasts? <laughs> so, this is kind of a fun little, um, uh, it, it's like an in-game joke. So, if you played Stellaris, like, way back in the day when it first came out, uh, you, you didn't have just hyperlanes. Uh, you could have hyperlanes, warp drive, or gateways. And and your civilization just started... You had to pick one at the start of the game. And the uh, the warp uh, drive one was my personal favorite. Um, because it had... It, like, it was kind of the most neutral one. It had the least um, deficit... Like, the, the least negative things, but the least positive things about it. It was one of the slowest, but you could go anywhere. Right, so you weren't restricted in how you could travel around. Um, they decided it was too difficult to balance the game with these three different kinds of um, uh, travel, and so they they zeroed in and said, "No, no, we're just we're getting rid of warp, we're getting rid of the gateway thing, and instead it'll it'll only be hyperlanes." And so this is a what if scenario. What if uh, the paradox development team? had gone with warp instead. So, uh, no warp beasts here. Are they a serious threat? The warp beasts assail every known civilization. They are a threat to all life. As far as we have determined, once warp travel reached a certain critical level in the galaxy, the warp beasts awoke and attacked. Several species we know of have already fallen, but so far we are holding them off. Sounds terrible. Can we help? 
Yes, we should establish an interdimensional trade treaty to strengthen both our nations for the benefits of all humans. We have detected cool. hostiles. So now we got that thing. Um, you know, on that note, we are at. Uh, oh God, we're getting. Whoa. Okay, lots of crazy stuff happened. Um, let's look at this crazy stuff next time, though, because uh, I'm looking at the clock and we are at our hour. Uh, thank you for coming by, everybody. And uh, for sure, we will um, we will continue with all this crazy stuff in the future. Cheers.